Hello, I am Mac, at least for a day, and everything is going to be okay. This will be the first music or audio tutorial in Dreams, and as I have been doing the last few videos, I will turn off my mic for the tutorial. You can probably hear the jackhammer in the background, so that won't be during the tutorial. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Oh yeah, and um, the tutorial voice will be pretty quiet, so you might have to turn your volume up. things don't sound the way they should, it can ruin the experience of playing. Don't worry, Cuthbert. The Dreamiverse contains heaps of ready-made sounds for us to use. First, let's switch over to play mode and see how it all sounds at the moment. Hmm, quiet, isn't it? Doesn't feel quite right. In fact, it's creeping me out, so let's head back into edit mode. Switch over to sound mode so we can start adding some sounds. Find the modes menu. It's inside the assembly menu. As you can see, there are lots of different modes. Each has its own set of tools for doing different things. We're currently in assembly mode. If you select the speaker symbol icon with X, we'll switch to sound mode. That's better. In the next step, we'll start adding sounds to the scene. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to start adding some background sounds. See the button with the magnifying glass in the sound menu? That's the search menu. Select it now to view the different types of sounds you can add. Now select the speaker button to search for sound effects. This is the Dreamiverse, where you can find all the wonderful stuff other dreamers have made. I've already set aside a collection of sound effects for you in here. That's what this collection is. It's bursting with different sound effects for you to play with. Select it with X to open it. I've arranged the sound effects into groups for you. To get a proper overview, use the right stick to zoom in and out of the collection. This group of sound effects are background sounds. You can hear a preview of each sound by hovering over them with your imp. Find something that fits the dreamy atmosphere of the scene. I rather like dream space. When you've found a sound you like, select it with X. The sound you selected now appears as a gadget on your imp. You can stamp it into your scene with R2, any place you like. It doesn't matter where you put it, because background sounds can be heard everywhere in a scene. Now let's start time with R3, and see how it all sounds. Ah, that's better. Notice how much more alive the scene feels with just that one sound. Imagine how it will feel with even more sound effects. But there's no need to imagine it. You can start adding more now, to create a layered and unique ambience. If you want to replace a sound effect, just stamp a different one over it. When you've got things sounding just how you want them, rewind time with L3 and move on to the next step.
Background sounds really help to create an immersive atmosphere. But to add sound to a specific object in the scene, you need to use what we call a spot sound. Let's try it out on the fire between the platforms. I'm sure we can find some fire sound effects in the collection. Let's take a look. Select search sound effects from the sound menu. As we open the tutorial collection in the last step, it's still open when we come back to the Dreamiverse. Isn't that handy? Ah, just what we need, some fire sound effects. Have a listen to some of the fire sounds and pick one you like. Once you've selected it, your imp will be equipped with a spot sound effect. See those rings coming off the gadget? That's the sound's fade zone. The rings show you how the sound fades away as you move further from the source. Let's stamp that sound between the first two platforms. Put it above the fire and see what that sounds like. If you want to see the sound's fade zone, select the gadget with X. Click R3 to listen to the sound effect. You'll notice the sound gets louder the closer you get to it. So yeah, you, you probably noticed I skipped ahead. I figured out what he was going to do next, probably, and went ahead and did it. Aha! You can almost feel that fire. Toasty. As you move away, out of the fade zone, it gets quieter, until eventually, you can't hear it at all. You can press the circle button now to deselect the sound effect. Then click L3 to rewind the scene. If you're happy with your spot sound, move on to the next step. Things haven't been that tricky for Connie so far, but the next gap looks a bit too big, even with her mighty jumping skills. Let's fly over to that floating platform using the left and right sticks and get a closer look at it. Looks like there's a trigger zone attached to it. Why don't we switch over to play mode and see what it does. Well, will you look at that? It lights up the platform when Connie steps on it. Lovely. You know what would make it even better though? If it made a sound as well. So let's switch back to edit mode and make that happen. I've got a feeling you can find something in the tutorial collection to use here. Go to the assembly menu and go back into sound mode. Now go to search and select search sound effects. Over here are some energy sound effects. Have a listen to a few. Pick a sound effect for your light up platform. I quite like the sound of dream terminal. See which one you like and select it with X. Now it's time to stamp it in the scene somewhere near the platform. In the next step, I'll show you how to trigger the sound effect. As we've already seen, background and spot sounds will play constantly when placed in the scene like this. But for the platform, we want the sound to be triggered by Connie. And for that to happen, we need to connect the sound effect to the same trigger zone that activates the glow. Move in closer to the platform using the left and right sticks. 
Take a good look at the trigger zone gadget. Do you see the output port that says detected when you hover over it? That means it will trigger when it detects a possessed puppet like Connie. So all we need to do to make the sound effect activate when Connie's on the platform is connect the output to the sound effect. Let's do that now. When you select the detected port with R2 or X, you'll see your imp becomes tethered to the port via wire. Gadgets communicate with each other using wires like this. You'll also notice that a power port has appeared on the bottom of the sound effect gadget. To connect the two gadgets, just hover over that power port and press R2 or X. Time to head into play mode to see how it sounds. When you're ready, switch back to edit mode and start the next step. Oh, I just realized something. We got so caught up with these sound effects, we forgot to add another platform for Connie. She must be getting impatient. Sort that out for her. The easiest thing to do would be to... Oh, I just realized something. We got so caught up with these sound effects, we forgot to add another platform for Connie. She must be getting impatient, so let's sort that out for her. The easiest thing to do would be to clone the platform. Remember how to do that? Just hover over it, hold L1, and press and hold R2. Once the clone has been created, let go of L1, move it to the right spot, then release R2 to place it down. When you clone an object, any gadgets attached to it will come along for the ride. So all you need to do now is to wire the trigger zone on the second platform to the sound effect. Or even better, grab a new sound effect from the collection, just for variety. It's up to you. Dream Shapers should always go with their instincts. Whatever you choose to do, move on to the next step when you're ready. There's just one more gap for Connie to cross before she reaches the door. That pink cylinder would make a great stepping stone for her, but it's all the way down in the water. If you take a closer look at it, you'll see there's a trigger zone and a movement sensor on it. They're not connected to anything right now. There's also a keyframe on the platform. I wonder what that does. Try selecting it with X to find out. Just as I thought. It raises the cylinder, so Connie can use it to cross over. Press the circle button to deselect the keyframe. Looks like all we need to do is connect the cylinder's trigger zone to the keyframe, so it moves up when she gets close. And while we're doing that, why not add a sound effect to it as well? Let's jump back into the sound effects collection and see if there's anything appropriate in there. Down here we've got some mechanical sound effect loops. These are the perfect sound effects for any sort of machinery in a scene. Hmm, we want something that would go well with a raising platform. I think I'll go for the heavy metal ratchet loop. That sounds good, right? 
Okay. Now select the sound effect of your choice and stamp it near the pink cylinder with R2 or X. In the next step, I'll show you how to connect all of the gadgets. Now we just need to do a little bit of wiring to get everything working. Remember, the trigger zone will activate when it detects Connie, triggering the keyframe to raise the platform. Grab the detected output from the trigger zone with R2 or X. Then stretch the wire to the keyframe gadget and connect it to its power port with R2 or X. Now let's get the sound effect working. This will be triggered by the movement sensor. The movement sensor detects when the object it's attached to is moving. So when the platform starts rising, the movement sensor will send a signal from its output port. That's the output port on the right side of the movement sensor gadget. It's called velocity overall. Press R2 or X over the port to create a wire. You'll need to connect the other end of the wire to the sound effects power port. Once that's done, switch over to play mode to test everything out. So much better. That sound effect really makes a big difference. There's even more you can do to bring this scene to life. See if you can add some sound to the water between the platforms. I think there might be some water sounds in the tutorial collection. Experiment with the different effects as much as you like and see what you can come up with. When you're done, just take Connie through the door in play mode to finish this tutorial. All right, we'll see if mine works. I'm pretty excited about this. Sound design is not something I'll be good at, I don't think, but I'll probably rely on other people's music and sound effects for my games. I, a friend of mine has already contacted me about making music for me, or, well, he told me that he's good at music, and then I asked if he would start making some songs for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm not any good at music or making sound effects, but I will definitely be using other people's. So, let's try this out. That one sounds different for some reason. I wonder why. There we go. Oh no! Darn it. There we go. That was the first audio tutorial, mostly adding sound effects to objects. And so I've been Mac. Thank you for joining me for a day. And remember, everything is going to be okay.